Hey, in this episode, I'm talking iPhones, oh yeah, skiing, and green beans, baby. I'm talking green beans. Hey, you come to the right place where I share with you what it is that you need to know about the value of growing your own food. Glad you're checking out the Scott Poirier Show. This is the so what I'm excited about, this is the pilot episode, the first episode that we get to be together and I get to start this whole process of these shows that are designed to give you information, to give you inspiration, to give you encouragement. I mean, I want to be your coach. I want to walk you through this whole thing to say there are more reasons than you could ever shake a stick at for getting out there and growing your own food. I mean, good quality, like nutritious stuff. And I got to tell you, my iPhone, actually it was my wife's iPhone. I never would have thought that the iPhone would have connected me to my garden, but let me tell you the story. So my wife is having some difficulties with her phone and I'm not very technical and she's even worse than I am, you know? So we decided to go ahead and make an appointment at the Apple store the other day. And we get in there, I'm telling you, 45 seconds were in and out, literally. I mean, they were like, press this button, this button, that button. And everything was like, oh, it was that simple. And like, yeah, yeah, it really was. So we're walking out of the mall, you know, where the Apple store is, and we start talking about our week going, well, we got to get some food for the week and stuff. So we're like, hey, why don't we just go over to Costco and, uh, you know, we can go get the stuff that we need. So we get in there, you know, we show our little membership card. And, and I love Costco. They have this huge aisle when you first walk in and about a third of the way up on the left hand side, at least at our Costco, it's this way. There are all these tables with all these clothes that are on them. You know, a lot, of, a lot of times they're like brand name clothes. And anyway, so I get over there, I'm going through some of the clothes there and uh, I'm looking at these pants and uh, these pants, they're um, outdoor, you know, exercise type pants, you know, and I'm checking these things out and the sizes were either small, they, they weren't waist size, they were small, medium, large, and extra large. And I don't know, I immediately went to, well, I guess I need a large, which, Maybe tells you something about what I'm thinking about myself and all that. But anyway, I'm like, oh, I couldn't find any larges. A bunch of mediums and a whole lot of extra larges, but not any larges, you know. So I finally get eye contact with this lady that's walking through who works there at Costco. And so I kind of flag her over, you know. And I say, hey, uh, wondering if uh, uh, there are any larges on these pants, maybe under the table or maybe out back or something. And she said, no, no, but basically what's on the table is all that there is, you know. And I'm like, oh, and she was really, really uh, pretty sweet lady. She goes, um, can I ask you a question about the pants? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, um, are they for you? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, oh, you, you don't need a large. You're definitely a medium. I'm thinking, I love this woman. I mean, I'll take her home. You know, I'm like, if I had any loose change on me, I'd have given her the money to go, hey, you know, like, what a compliment, right? Like, no, you're, you're really a medium. Well, we hit it off right there. So we're standing there, we're talking a little bit, and somehow... We start talking about gardening. And when it came up, and I'm wondering how that happened. Huh, I must have brought it up, right? Because I'm kind of like crazy over the garden stuff. Anyway, so here we are really talking about gardening and her eyes just lit up and she said, you know, our grandparents back in the day, they used to you know, know how to grow all kinds of stuff, but now nobody knows how to grow stuff. And I'm thinking, well, maybe in a lot of ways that's true, but I'm like, but I can grow stuff. She's like, you actually grow food. I'm like, I grow all kinds of food. And so we sort of start talking and I say, well, what about you? Have you gotten out there? Have you, you know, grown any food? And she's like, oh, I can't grow anything I've tried and I'm really bad. And I'm like, no, that's just not true. You can do it. You really can get out there and do it. I gave her my car that just has, you know, my Facebook and email and YouTube and Twitter and all that stuff and said, you got to get out there. Let me inspire you. Let me encourage you. There are a lot of good reasons why you want to be out out there growing your own food, you know, for good health, for better living. And uh, yeah, the iPhone and the garden, I guess it was connected. Well, the reason why it was connected, it's really about keeping your eyes open. It's about observing. And I think that's a wonderful principle to bring into the whole gardening scene as well. You want to keep your eyes open, always looking for opportunity. That's the value of gardening as well. There are opportunities on top of opportunities that any one of us can take advantage of. That was my connection. I'm thinking I could probably connect almost anything to the garden if you give me 20 seconds to kind of create some exposure. I bet you we could start talking gardening. So here I am thinking, 
But here we are now in the winter, and I'm like, I have this love-hate relationship with snow. I mean, I really do love snow in a lot of ways. My number one hate for snow is that I also relate that to the garden. You know, whenever I'm walking by one of the windows in my house, I've got a pretty good-sized garden, you know, and I look out and I see all this snow out there. I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be such a long winter. I mean, I'm going to be depressed by the time this is done. But then I go, but I love snow in a lot of ways. And I'm thinking, why not lean more on the love of snow and maybe and maybe I can hold on to that and that'll get me through the winter uh, maybe a whole lot happier um, but also make winter go by a whole lot quicker so I'm thinking what better way to deal with the snow when you want to have fun what better way than to go skiing I mean all of my attention now is on let me just absorb as much of the value of the snow that's out there and I'll just have fun with that snow and we'll get through it not to mention if you're not a skier, there are other aspects of snow that you might be able to fall in love with that will help you get through your season so that you get ready in the spring and start, and start growing some stuff. Let's get you through this winter season. Snow actually has been coined years ago, coined you know, poor, uh, the poor man's fertilizer. There's something, you know, quality about snow. Uh, one of the main um, uh, nutrients in snow is nitrogen. Nitrogen's a pretty good thing. Uh, and I can tell you a lot of products in the garden really like to have good nitrogen in the soil. And fortunately, snow has a fairly, you know, decent amount of that um, uh, nitrogen that you can put in. Now, if you look at my garden and the way that my driveway is situated in the path, I cut this path around the side and, and into the back of my house. Uh, just in case there was an issue and we had to get out of the back, you know, which is where my whole garden is. So I snow blow that whole section. My garden has, you know, by the time we get to the end of the season, I mean, I've got like four, five, six feet of snow sitting on top of my garden beds and everything. I'm like, nitrogen, baby, let's get all the snow in there. Snow, it's good for your garden. All right, so you can start right there. If this is your first year, just start shoveling your snow over into the section that you want to have your garden and we'll get things going in the spring. All right. All right. One last thing. I want to talk to you about these babies. Green beans. I'm telling you, they're one of the easiest things to grow. I take a four by eight bed, okay, four foot by eight foot bed, and I make four rows in that bed. So I put two rows on the, on the outside and I put two rows in the middle. I take the, uh, the beans, I put them about three inches apart, and then I do a little thinning. Once they germinate and they get to, you know, maybe three inches high, I'll do a little bit of thinning, maybe keep them four or five inches apart. Uh, there are always some areas where you don't uh, have any beans that are sprouting, and so as you're thinning things out, you can transplant them. I'm telling you, that's almost all that you need to do. You get these things in there, and I do bush beans. It's just the way that I like to do them. These things are so prolific. But speak about nitrogen. Your beans, as they're growing in the soil, release nitrogen back into the soil. So one of the great things that you want to know about green beans is you want to rotate those and then maybe in the, in the year that you rotate out of that bed, you put something in like peppers or tomatoes, herbs, and they're going to love all of that nitrogen. I got to tell you, one of the best things to grow in the garden are green beans. I'm telling you, I can eat these things all, oh yeah, look at that. I can eat them all year long. I can eat them cooked or I can eat them right out of the jar. I'm expecting to eat these babies right into April, maybe early May. Mm. I'm telling you, look at that. Mm. I wish we could taste these. Green beans. Here I am, the end of the year. I canned these things like three and a half, four, no, almost four months ago I canned these things. Good, quality, organic, healthy, nutritious. We're going to get in the garden and we're growing this year, right? Give me your comments. I mean, I'd love to hear some of the things that you're thinking. In fact, let me leave you with a question of the day, okay? Tell me, what is the thing that you haven't grown yet in your garden that you would absolutely love to start growing this season, this coming season, in the spring or in the summer? What number one thing would you like to do in the garden that you haven't done before? All right, let's make that the question. We'll kind of go from there and we're gonna do this, all right? Thanks for checking it out. Woo!
Oh, subscribe. You've got to subscribe to me. Oh, subscriptions are like hugs. You know what I mean? Give me a hug. Give me a hug.